Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, back with another slimline card. I've been saying I will keep posting more of these, I'm kind of obsessed, they're fun. So for today's card, I pulled out another oldie but goodie favorite. This is the Simon Says Stamp Beautiful Flowers 2 set, which I have done multiple videos on. I have an entire playlist with this videos using this set and vi videos using the beautiful flowers, like the original stamp set. And I'll have a link to that at the very end of this video. So for this one, I stamped this large flower cluster onto just some Ranger watercolor paper with Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. And then I'm doing, I, st I still call this simple watercolor. I know, I think I wouldn't have considered this simple when I first started experimenting with watercolor but I still consider this simple in the sense of I'm just putting down color. I'm not being super particular. Like my first layer there was just, just yellow, really simple. I'm using my little Prima Classics watercolor set again. Um, I've been using this in almost every single video lately. Just, it's a convenience thing. It's just a great little palette and it's small, so it doesn't take up a lot of space, but when you start experimenting more, like I would say this is a good, any basic palette like this with just, you know, the basic colors is a good little beginner palette because once you start using it, once you start experimenting with mixing colors, that sort of thing, you can pretty much get any color you need from a palette like this. So I used just a basic yellow with water for the first layer. And then I was doing some mixing on one of the little like hinged openings on here. And I started adding the very far left pool of color was yellow and a little bit of purple. Now I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of color theory. In fact, I'm not going to go into it at all, but you, there's so much resources online now, like just everything, everything you could imagine to teach about color theory and all that sort of thing. But the easiest way to darken yellow is to add a contrasting color. So I added a little bit of purple, you know, got the shade I wanted. I also did a little pool there on the far right. That was the yellow, a little bit of purple and a tiny bit of orange. The only thing I will say is when you're working specifically with yellow, the teeniest bit is all you need. Like, you know, for purple, et cetera, whatever you're mixing with it, when you're trying to, you know, deepen yellow or just change it a bit, you do not need much like at all. Just start with the teeniest amount and then work your way from there. So that's what I did just to get those darker shades for these flowers. And again, I was just adding them in with an image like this. I just don't feel like you need to be super particular or you know stress out over it because there's already so much detail there in the image like all the lines everything so I just kind of followed the lines where all the for all the darker areas and that was it so I had kind of my two little bit of darker shades I did a little bit of brown for the one flower center and then the greenery I actually did with just gray so painted on the gray and then I mixed a little bit of black with the gray just to darken it up and then painted that on again just added that little bit of darker area and that was it, just simple. As always, you could leave it here. <laughs> I'm gonna add splatter. I'm, I just splatter all the things, all the things. So I dried everything quickly first because when adding splatter, if the image is still wet at all, the splatter is just going to blend into everything. So I added just a little bit of yellow splatter first. That was, you know, just left at that. And then my favorite, my just go-to is just the Ranger Perfect Pearl Powder mixed. It's just mixed with water in a little Ranger spray bottle. I've also shown on videos where I'll just take a little bit of the powder mixed up with water, use a paintbrush, splatter, whatever works. So I splatter that all over that um, image and then just set that aside. And then for my, what will be my background, I have this diagonal stripe stencil. This came out years ago. Um, I pull it out every once in a while and I'm right how much I love it. So I pulled it out, I have it in my splat box and I'm spraying the back of the stencil with the uh, Pixie spray from uh, is it iCraft. Yeah, the iCraft Pixie spray. Always use this in a well-ventilated area. I have a window open like right in front. It's like right off camera. So I keep an open window or you could spray it outside. It's just, you know, common sense here, but sprayed it and then let that dry, which only takes literally a minute or two and it's just a tacky repositionable adhesive. So sprayed that on the back of the stencil. So now it's all nice and tacky with stencils like this. It's really nice because all these thin lines, like the parts of the stencil want to move when you're blending over it. So um, with, if you don't want to use 
a spray adhesive or anything like that. Uh, an easy way to kind of get around it, which I've done with this stencil before that pixie spray was available, was you just blend in the direction of the stencil. And I do that anyway, even with the spray, I still blend in the direction of the stencil because again, all those thin little lines, they just, they want to move. It's just, you know, nature. So I have it tacked down with that pixie spray just to make my life a little easier. I'm also working on just my waffle flower water medium mat because this kind of clings to everything as well. And then I've masked off the right hand portion of this because the stencil is only about six inches wide and my card background since it's a slimline card is going to be about eight and a half or this piece right now is eight and a half inches so i did my blending and then i just peeled up the stencil and because it has that pixie spray on it it's still tacky and i just lined it up again and then blended on more ink and for my blending i started with hickory smoke distress oxide ink i'm just using a mini um blender brush or blending foam Blender brushes would work great too. And got that on there. And then remove the stencil. The stencil, I'm gonna wipe off the side with ink, the side of the pixie spray, I'm just leaving. I just put it back in the packaging just like I store all my stencils so that next time I go to use it, more often than not, it's still tacky and I can get usually a good two or three uses out of it before I just need to wash it with soap and water and, you know, respray it or whatever. So after I did all that blending, I added some, what color did I use now? My brain is just, stopped uh weathered wood so i blended on weathered wood over top of the stencil i'm not worried about getting a perfect blend because i'm gonna add splatter again of course but also i'm gonna add that big floral image so it's gonna cover up a lot so i just wanted to make sure i kind of got that nice deep smooth blend kind of on the bottom and then the rest of it on camera it looks more splotchy as it dried it looked a lot smoother but it's funny how the camera this time for once picked up usually in re it's in real life things will look kind of splotchy and odd and then when I go to edit it it doesn't look like that <laughs> but right here it's like man that's just a splotchy blend but you don't notice it on the finished card so I used more of the hickory smoke oxide with a paintbrush added splatter and then of course added more of that ranger perfect pearl splatter because it's gorgeous and then I die cut that beautiful flowers to um, image with the coordinating wafer die so I've got that all die cut. And then this background, I decided to cut down a bit. It was originally three and a half by eight and a half inches, which is going to be my finished card size. So I trimmed this down a bit. It ended up so that it ended up being about three and a quarter by eight and a quarter, just slightly smaller than what will be my card base. So I trimmed that down and then I'm going, since I have my paper trimmer out, I'm going to trim down a piece of heavyweight white cardstock. So this will be trimmed down to seven inches by eight and a half so that I can score it at three and a half. So it'll be a three and a half by eight and a half slimline card. That's just this method so far with all these cards, it's been about the same thing. I haven't been using as many dies. I do have some that just arrived. So I will use more slimline dies and stuff, but obviously you can get away without using any, just whatever floats your boat. So anywho, back to the card scored it at three and a half so i have my top folding eight and a half inch by three and a half inch card base and i have that card front just slightly smaller than the card base and my big old flower cluster so then for the sentiment on the front of the card um by this point this background is completely dry i think it's actually the next day or later in the day because like the sun's like shining through my blinds anyway so I'm going to use a sentiment from the Thankful Flower stamp set, another big stamp set that I just, I love, I love the images. I love the big sentiments and that's why I pulled this one out. So I test it first. I use my anti-static powder tool where I'm going to stamp sentiment and pour the embossing powder over it just to make sure everything was dry, that the, you know, embossing powder wasn't going to cling because distress oxides can take longer to dry, the splatter, all that stuff. So I made sure it was dry. I lined up the thank you sentiment onto the... Uh, background using my misty again and then I'm going to again anti-static powder tool I'm going to ink up the stamp twice and stamp it twice with clear embossing ink just to make sure because it's a you know a solid sentiment and I stamp the sentiment and then I'm coated it with my Wendy Vecchi sunflower embossing powder this thought would be kind of a fun touch I have all these color embossing powders and I don't reach for them often enough so I pulled that out and poured that over melted it with my heat tool and then while I have my Misty out, I'm gonna do the inside of the card. So just open it up, 
And lining up this way, it's technically bigger than this, but you can still close the lid without wrecking the edge of the card. So other times I've shown in videos, I'll just like fold the card inside out. That works too. So I lined up this big flower image again, and I gotta say, like, it's like it was made for slimline cards. It's the perfect size. I love it. So ink that up with uh, mustard seed distress oxide ink, and then I'm gonna stamp that onto the inside of the card. Once that's stamped, I'm going to remove that stamp and I'm going to use the big, another big bulky sentiment from the Thankful Flower set, another favorite of mine. So I line that up on the inside of the card and then this I'm stamping with that Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. So I got that stamped. So now the inside of the card is complete. So after that was done, all I need to do is start assembling my card front. So I coated, they're placed on the back of that die cut floral. Um, a bunch of thin 3D foam squares and then pop that onto the background. And then the background I'm just going to adhere to my card base with some Craft Tacky adhesive. And then once that's adhered, I'm going to add some bling. Always got to have the bling. So got that stuck into place and then I'm using some Pretty Pink Posh jewels this time. I'm using Marigold, which is kind of like a orangey yellow. That to kind of tie in with the embossing powder. The embossing powder ended up going a little darker than I had originally planned, but I didn't want to redo the, you know, completely redo everything. So I'm going to tie it together with the jewels and I'm actually going to tie it together with the envelope too, because I found some pattern paper in my stash that was more of that orangey yellow shade as well. So I used the marigold jewels and lemon drop jewels and just adhered them all over this card with craft tacky glue and just used my embellishment wand. And then yeah, the envelope was made with some doodle bug pattern paper in my stash using the Trinity Stamps Slimline Envelope Wafer Die Set that I've shown in multiple videos. I've been using it for pretty much every envelope for these slimline cards and I love it. So this is the finished card. As always, I will have links to everything I used in the description box below the video. So you can just check out the description box below. I will also link to my blog post. In the blog post, I'll have the pictures. I'll have picture links to all the supplies. So again, if any of that interests you, you can just check out all the info in the description box below the video. Thank you all so much for watching, for subscribing, thumbs up and commenting, sharing, all of it. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys very soon in the next video. Bye.